Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode 2 of Let's Try Caravaneer 2. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, first episode, we kind of covered all of the basics in the learning process of the game. And uh, this time, we'll see what else there is to learn. Okay, we are familiar with this. The game is paused. Let's um head back in. It said to press the uh, caravan button. Um, caravan menu. Um, no, that's not it. We went over all of that. Oh, uh, your caravan stopped. There we go. Just click the caravan. Uh, we checked out all of these except for some of the bunker peeps. So let's check the doctor. Okay. So doctor, eye surgery, upper limb surgery, lower limb surgery. So there's surgery in the game. Um, these are what he can perform. We can heal here. Uh, there's prices, of course. Um, so that's what the doctor does. Let's go ahead and exit. Chairman Brass, don't want to return to him because... He already uh, talked to us. So let's check out Amelia. Oh, hi. I'm glad you're here. I wanted to talk to you. You're going out to a mission, right? Um, yes, but I don't know if I'm supposed to speak to you about it. I think it's fine. Chairman Brass told me about it. Seriously? Okay. So what's your problem? I uh, wanted to ask you a favor. I've got a baby son. Uh, that's right. You've had a son. Sorry. I should have congratulated you when you gave birth. No, no. It's not your fault. It's me. I've been very discreet about him. I didn't want people to pay attention. Why? He's not a regular child. He's different. If people see him, they may, uh, get upset, maybe. They may, well, I don't even want to think about these things. But wait, what exactly is wrong with him? He's, uh, he's a monster. A monster? Well, not a real monster, but he's scary. He's very hairy, and he has those teeth, sharp teeth. And his eyes, he's like an animal. And he makes animal noises and tries to climb on things. Never stops. Oh, it sounds like a serious problem. What did medics say about it? Not much. They can't heal him because they don't have any information about his condition. It's a genetic disorder, they said, but they can't tell anything else. Uh, how can I help you with this? Well, maybe, uh, when you're out there, maybe you meet someone, or maybe you find a book about genetic disorders. Even if he cannot be healed, I still want to know what's going on with him, because I, I don't want people to see him as a monster. Maybe if they see that his condition has a medical explanation, maybe they'll accept him. Um, of course, I'll do everything I can. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know if I can ever repay you for this, but if you if you need anything, just tell me, okay? Don't worry. I'm glad to help a member of my community. I'll talk to you when I get back to tell you what I found out. Oh, wait. I've just realized one thing. Wait a second. Here, take these. My husband was a scout, you know. After his death, I found these bullets in his drawer. I was going to return them to Chairman Brass, but I can just give them to you now. You are the one who will need them. Great. They're the same caliber as my gun. Thanks. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. All right. So we got a quest. Um, and I think we're pretty much ready to go. Hmm. Go to the map. Um, we have our coordinates. Food needed, 901 kcals. Food available, 1,700. 13 hours. I guess um, we're good to go. Let me... Let me leave. And save. As... YouTube 2A... And, uh, let's go ahead and go. So, do I hit... Well, I don't think we have a, a route from here. We have to go to the map and hit go. Let's go. 
You ready to pause? There's rovers. Two men. We're going to avoid them. And here we are at Silos. Because Chairman Brass did say to avoid um, anyone. Um, wow, they make a lot of food that they don't consume. And a little bit of water, or a good amount of water, some forage. Um, all right, let's go ahead and talk to Cricket. Well, wait a minute, should I indulge those two men? Let's, um, let's give it a try if we were to indulge them. Can I just hit play from here? No. I would have to actually hit go here. All right, and All right, you've been attacked by rovers, people in this group too. Don't forget to equip your people before going to a battle. You'll not be able to do it when the battle begins. Um I think we're equipped. Auto distribute ammo and start battle. Okay. So we'll do a combat t uh, tutorial. Battles have the same mechanics as in most other turn-based games. You control each one of the characters when it's his or her turn. Clicking on the ground makes your current character walk, and clicking on an opponent performs an attack, if such an attack is possible. Perhaps the only part of the battle mode that needs explanation is the interface. This part contains information about your current character. It contains HP, simple, morale, M, AP, and problem indicators, 12 AP and possible problems. Clicking on the character's portrait centers the view on the current character. It can also be done by pressing spacebar or M. This part controls the weapon the character, current character is carrying. The space next to the weapons icon shows the currently loaded ammo. Um, this right here, LRN. While the part under Reload Title lets you choose the type of ammo you want to load next. Okay. Available 45, you can do a type of ammo. If you have several different types of ammo. Hotkeys for this area are R Reload, TY Scroll Reload Ammo, GH Change Attack Mode, which is here. F switch weapon, I drop weapon, U unload weapon. So this looks like drop. Or maybe this is drop. Or no, this is this is unload, I think. Because that's a clip with an arrow down. This looks like drop. This looks like switch weapon. Okay. This is a mini map. Your people are blue, enemies are red, and neutral people are gray. Clicking on a certain point on the minimap centers a view on this point, okay. This area allows you to control first aid kits. If your current character has any of them in his or her equipment, you can choose the one you want to use and make the character use it on himself or on another person standing in an adjacent square. We have one basic first aid kit. Hotkeys for first aid kits are V, B, scroll type, C, use. Pressing C again before clicking on the patient cancels the healing mode. And this area serves for picking up weapons that were dropped on the ground. You must be in the same square as the dropped weapon to pick it up. If there are several weapons in the same square, you can scroll through them. Your hands must be empty in order to pick up a weapon. You may want to drop your current weapon before you pick up a new one. Hotkeys for picking up weapons. KL scroll and J pick up. This button ends the current turn and passes the turn to the next character. Hotkeys enter, tab, and end perform the same action. Holding shift, act, shift act, activates walking mode, during which clicking on an enemy will not result in an attack. The view area can be moved by clicking on the mini-map, placing the mouse cor cursor close to the edge of the view, or pressing WASD or the arrow keys. E is another useful hotkey that centers the view on one of the enemies. Pressing E several times cycles through the enemies, starting from the one located closest to the current character. Okay, so let's try that E. Okay, we don't know where the... Where the enemy... Oh, no. There they are. He's not working, though. Alright, um... Let's maybe come back down here and get some cover. Uh, 
Um, sure. And, uh, and turn. Okay, blocked. I don't know if there is cover. Let's come here. And hit chance is low. Aim shot. Hit chance is low. Um, just hit tab. Okay, they're both carrying melee weapons, so... 35. Let's go ahead. We have 12 AP. Do an aim shot. Wow. Lost one point due to bleeding. Okay. Um, let's do quick shots here. Uh... Boom. Got him flawlessly without taking a hit, but it did get a little close for comfort. For money. Um. Oh. Forage. Right, I did click on turn on foraging. Wait. Lizard meat? This is what we have over here? Where? No. I'm confused. Who's... Did we pick up lizard meat? Yeah, there's our map of the tribal region. I don't know where we got the lizard meat from. Uh, the forge, I guess we've just been picking up. Click to remove. Let's take, um... If I hit all, it takes us to load 23 out of 28, but... Um... Six containers, five pounds of water, well, five kilograms, money, um, loot them. All right, so if we have to drop stuff, we can. We took the money, we're at 604. Cool. Uh, let's exit. And head to Silos. All right, let's uh, talk to Cricket, I guess. Hey, yo. Um, hi. I'm looking for a town called Silos. According to my map, it was supposed to be here. Yup, your map is right. It's just a little old. There used to be a town here, but it ain't no more. Um, what happened to it? Nothing. The usual stuff. People died. People left. Some joined the tribes. Others became rovers. Uh, tribes? There are four tribes around here. Lintu, Drakar, Pulid... And Kiwi. Can you tell me more about them? Yup, what do you want to know? Uh, please tell me about Lintu. They live north of here and they're K-breed. Some don't like them much because they say they're not being sincere, but I say they just do what suits them best. They don't want bloodshed and neither do I. I'm too old for these things. Bloodshed? What kind of bloodshed? It's complicated, you know. Politics. Uh, please tell me about it. I really want to hear. Okay, I'll tell you. First, there are those crypt Drakar nits who terrorize the whole region. I have to pay half of my earnings for them to leave me alone. And still, every time some of these crypt Luthers get drunk, they pass by here shouting, throwing stones, insulting me and breaking my hives. Maybe they're drunk, but they know what they're doing. They're keeping people scared, so people won't have any ideas in their heads. What kind of ideas? Ideas, you know, like fighting Drakar, not paying them. And they do it well, scaring people. Everyone's afraid. Pulid pay them their tribute, and Lintu... Lintu don't, but they still do what Drakar want them to do. They just sit on their butts and let Drakar do their business in their ter on their territory. Pulid hate Lintu really bad for that. Um, for what? For not confronting Drakar. Because you see, before Drakar came here... Pullet and Lintu were good friends, called themselves brothers and stuff. But when Drakar came, Pullet fought them and Lintu didn't help. You see, instead of helping their brothers, Lintu agreed with their enemies. Without Lintu's help, Pullet lost the war. Now Drakar do whatever they want with them. And Lintu, Lintu ain't doing a crypt thing about it. Uh, did they like being allies with Drakar? 
Of course not. Nobody likes Drake Carr. They're some crip bloodsuckers. Lintu were simply afraid. If they start a war against Drake Carr, they would probably lose it. But even if they win, they would lose many men, and then others like Drake Carr will come and take control. Now they're at least strong enough to pact with Drake Carr, not to be their livestock like Pullid. And what if Lintu and Pullid join their forces against Drake Carr? Oh, if they didn't do it in the first time, how do you think they'll do it now that they hate each other badly? And even if they do, it doesn't change anything. Pullid don't have many breed left, and they're not good warriors. All their good warriors died in the last war. And what about Kivi? Kivi ain't living in this crypt world. Drakar never dared to disturb them, so I'm not even sure if they know what's going on here. Didn't Pullid ask for their help when Drakar came? I don't know. Maybe they did, but Kivi obviously didn't help them. They never do anything but meditate or whatever they do there. Isn't there a way to convince them to help drive Drakar away? I don't know, but I wouldn't waste my time trying to find out. I'm telling you, th these chunks are lunatics. Are there any other forces in the region? No, not really, except for a legend about Lois and her girl warriors. <laughs> this is cool. Please tell me more. They say that Lois was a pulled woman. During the war, Drakar killed her husband and all her family, and she swore to avenge them. She and some other girls went deep into the desert and hid there. Since then, they attacked Drakar raiders during the night, appearing out of nowhere and disappearing in the same way. Nobody has spoken to them since their disappearance, and nobody knows where they live. Some even say that they are ghosts of women killed by Drakar, but I don't think it's true. Hmm, interesting, thanks. Can I ask you more questions? Yep, what do you want to know? All right, let me do Lintu again. They live north of here. Um, go back to this screen. Um, oh. Uh, what can you tell me about Drakar? I didn't ask him about his hives. I want to know about his hives. Is there something about his hives here? Dang. What can you tell me about Drakar? Oh, you better stay away from them. They ain't good chunks at all. Slavery and robbery is what they do for life. If you meet them in the desert, you'd better hide or run away or they'll rob you and sell you on a slave market after doing some bad stuff to you. And if you resist, they just kill you. Most of them are in the east, but you can meet their raiders everywhere, so watch out, you hear me? Thanks for the advice. Can you tell me about the other tribes? Um, I'd like to know more about Pulid. Pulid, they're the smallest tribe, and they hate everyone, but don't worry. They're mostly women and old men, absolutely harmless. Okay. Is there anything you can tell me about Kivi? Kivi believe that they're better than others, and I must say they're crypt right about it. They're rich, and they have the best warriors. They could rule the whole area if they wanted, but they don't want it. Because they're spiritual, you know? They mind their own business and don't deal with dirt like us here. It's their philosophy or whatever. I see. Um, you've mentioned some rovers before. Who are they? Yup, rovers. Haven't you met any, any of them on, their, on your way here? They don't belong to any tribe. Some of them are totally nuts, and some are just unfortunate. Because they have no other way to survive but to roam through the desert. They can be dangerous for defenseless travelers, you know. But they're definitely not a problem for someone with some combat skills and appropriate equipment. Actually, most of them end up being hunted by Drakar tribe and sold at slave markets. Interesting, and what about the tribes? There are four tribes around here. Lintu, Drakar, Pulid, and Kivi. Oh, can you tell me more about them? Um, I'm looking for a friend of mine. Oh, look, there used to be a merchant here in Silos named Finn. Any idea where I can find him? Finn, of course. He used to run our shop. It was convenient to have a shop nearby, but it's no more. A group of Drakar raiders came here one day and took everything Finn had in his shop. He was trying to stop them, and they beat him badly. He's lucky to be alive. I don't know why they did it. He was paying them their part regularly, as far as I know. Uh, but anyway, even, it didn't, even if it didn't happen, he would have to close his shop sooner or later. There are no clients in this place anymore. Do you know where he is now? Maybe, maybe not. What do you want from him exactly? Nothing special. I just want to buy some equipment, and a friend of mine recommended him to me. Kay, you don't look like Drakar to me. I'll tell you. He's with Lintu now, working for their merchant, helping him with all sorts of stuff. He doesn't have his own shop anymore, so I don't know if he can help you in any way. But go talk to him if you like. I think he lives right next to the merchant's tent. With Lintu, who are to the north. Thanks, I'll pay him a visit later. Can you tell me something else now? Um... Oh, I want to know about his hives, bro. I might have to reload. Um, actually...
Looking for a friend of mine. Maybe you could help me. Maybe. Who's the person? His name is Olaf. He's in his late 40s, average height, red hair. He might have passed here recently. Have you seen him? I know that chunk. He used to visit my neighbor quite often, but since the neighbor died, your friend doesn't show up anymore. I guess he doesn't like me much. In any case, I certainly haven't seen him around here any time recently. Where do you think I should look for him? Ask the tribes in the area, but I have a feeling that if your friend is missing, he's been caught by Drakar. There's been some serious demand for slaves lately, so Drakar working extra hard trying to catch more folk for sale. Okay. Um... All right, I'm done. I'm going to see one of the tribes now. If you're going to speak with Lintu, send them my regards and ask them why they don't come to visit. Great, will do. Thanks for the info. You know, I've got some delicious insects here. If you buy them from me, you could sell them to Lintu for a higher price and make some profit. Why would they pay a higher price for them? Because that's how this world works. I grow insects, so I have many insects. I don't need so many insects, so I'm interested in selling them. So I'll sell them to you for a good price. Lintu, on the other hand, don't grow any insects because they're moving from place to place all the time and can't take the hives with them. Besides, if you are planning to travel to other tribes, I can give you advice on how to earn money. Buy some wool from Lintu and sell it to Pulid. Old Pulid women might be useless in many things, but they do make crypt good yarn. You can buy this yarn from them and take it to Kiwi, who uses it to make jackets. And jackets, you know, everybody needs jackets. Sell them wherever you want. Even I may buy one from you if I like the color. Hmm, interesting. Are you sure Lintu will buy insects from me? Oh, of course I'm sure. They love them. They buy them for me every time their scouts get here. They just ain't passing by lately. They must be busy doing something in a different zone. All right, let's trade then. All right, trading is a very important part of the game. It's done through trading screens like this one. The screens are divided into two parts. The upper part is yours, and the lower one is your partner's. You need to move the items that you want to buy from the partner's inventory onto his area, and the items you want to sell from your inventory onto your area. You'll see a number that represents the difference between the total values of your and your partner's items. This difference needs to be paid in money. Remember that the deal is not done until you press barter or exchange button. Okay, so he's got 36 kilograms of water, right? Insects. Estimated price, 20.63 per kilogram, I guess. Good energy, 121, 40% water percentage, but minus 3 taste. And he's got forage. Um, so how many units do we want? What if we took, like, all 11 max? Oh, we can only take 4.3 because... Where did all this come from? Snake meat? Jerboa meat? Oh, I guess we collect this on the way. Interesting. Um. Wow, lizard meat. Whoa, snake meat. Very expensive. Taste plus two. Jerboa meat, not so much. Um, maybe we can sell the Jerboa meat. And I'm paying him 82. But that also frees up some kilograms. No, 0.1 kilogram. Um, meat and beans are good to have. How about the forage? Max, sell it all. Oh, wow, now I'm only giving him 49. Um, crowbar is cheap, so is a small knife. Uh, but they're extra. So the small knife. Keep the crowbar because we don't know what we could use it for. I mean, same with the small knife, really. So let's just keep that. I think it's only 0.2 kilograms. This is 2.5, but it could open things for us. Um... Let's go ahead and part with a little bit of water, I guess. How about... Oh, I love this interface. One... Is there a point button? Huh, I don't see... Wait, how do we clear? I want 1.5. I can't do that? 
on this interface. Let me clear out two pounds. Takes me to 5.1. Now we can do 5.6 more to take us to a full load. Um, we're paying 159. Um, if we're gonna make money on them, I mean, might as well take them. Uh, I don't think I want to get rid of much anything else. So. Too heavy. Um, hmm. Takes it down to 74. I mean, we'll find more and let's maybe keep the water. 79. Uh, map of the tribal region. All right, I guess that's good. Oh, we're overloaded. 29 out of 28. Um, maybe we can fling some beans on them. Yeah, we can't do like a plus. So maybe one. One unit of beans. Goes to 55, we're paying him. Load is right. Um, doesn't leave us with much food, though. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to check my, check the map and stuff to see. We're overloaded still. We're, maybe we just can't take that much, that many crickets. And we'll take back like our lizard meat. And just give him the Jeroboa meat and the forage and uh, take like eight, eight pounds of insects for 123. Um, all right, let's do it. Boom, down to 480, but that's cool. Anything else? No, nothing else. See you later. All right, so what I wanted to do, though... Oh, good, the camps are marked. So we want to head from Silos to Lintu to start, and we'll go in a counterclockwise manner. Stay away from Drakar. So 18 hours, 79 kilometers. Water needed 2 liters. We have 7. Food needed 12. We have 11,000. So really, we can buy more food at Lintu, so I'm not thinking this right. So let's go ahead and get the insects um let's take the 3.7 okay we're gonna actually drop off um snake meat it has a higher price even though this is actually better the lizard meat so let's pitch him the snake meat um let's pitch him two kilos of water or whatever Okay, we're at 2.4 insects. Um, get more water from Lintu, you know. More food. We have plenty of food. Let's throw a unit of beans in there. And he's basically giving me all his insects plus 64. Yeah, I think we can do that. Boom. To exit. Um, now let's check the map. We have 15. Oh, that's because of all the insects. Water needed two. We have five. But we're good to go. So um, what I want to do first, though, is come here and um, check different stats. Recent data. Water. Forage. Population one in silos. Wealthiness. Can't hire anybody. Industries. Insect farming. We could buy someday for 506k. Um, 
Oh no, I lost my lighter somewhere. Excuse me, I left it downstairs. Uh, but, um... I'm gonna light up here. They make insects. There's a water well. And forage cultivation. Hmm. Okay. That's not bad. 21 per day. Consumes well, consumes water. Produces forage only for 67k. Your industry is none. New industry, none. Caravan menu. Um, our morale's actually gone up quite a bit. Um, let's look at our supplies. This is what I'm not understanding. Uh, I don't understand this. I don't want to consume any of the insects, so put that at zero. So, and if I don't want to consume the lizard meat, oh no, I guess I have to, or relative. I don't understand this relative. Don't consume the insects. Um, I guess just consume the beans and the lizard meat. And what does that actually equal if we cancel out the uh, if we cancel out the insects? Because that's a big that's 11.3. How do we see, like, a graph of this? Um, overview. We have all that available, but it's not really available because... Um, of what we're consuming. So how can I... I guess we just have... Point five and two point eight kilograms and point five kilograms of lizard meat. Um, <sighs> water rations two point one per day. Food rations, 90%. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, let's just... Uh, I guess we're down to 3.3 thousand kcals. Or no, I don't think it's a one-to-one -one ratio, though. Hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of confused. But anyway, I think we're good to go. Um, caravan menu, map. Alright, so let's go and save. Let's pause, which I have it set to. Save as YouTube to be. See how long we've been playing. Uh, 34 minutes. Okay, so we can continue a little bit. And... Uh, Let's go. We'll hit the Lintu camp. Rovers, one man. I'd like to go meet them, but if I chase them... Forget it. He's gonna go. Lintu camp. Alright. So we're getting to know the camps in the area. The lore is pretty interesting thus far. Let's see, we've got Finn, Merchant, Kukul, 
and marketplace. All right, so let's head to let's go to our caravan menu. Oh, we've lost we're lost a lot of food. Wow. Um. Huh, we're gonna have to buy more food, but then we can drop off these insects here, which is cool. Uh, let's talk to Kukul. Hello, traveler. Hello, my name is Matthew. I'm Kukul, the leader of this tribe. What brings you here, Matthew? Uh, Cricket sends you his regards. Cricket, our old pal. How is he doing? He's fine. He's wondering why you don't come to visit him anymore. Oh, we're just being busy here. If you see him again, tell him we'll drop by one of these days. Sure will. So how can I help you, Cricket's friend? There's a friend of mine who's missing, named Olaf. He might have passed here a couple of days ago. I haven't heard about any strangers passing by in the last couple of weeks. Sorry. Um, can you tell me a little bit about this region? Hmm, what can I tell? We're four tribes here. Us, Lintu, Pulid. Us, Lintu, Pulid, Kivi, and Drakar. Drakar came to this area not long ago, and there was a war between them and Pulid. Drakar won the war, and now Pulid are forced to pay them a significant tribute. Um, what was your role in this war? Kivi and us stayed neutral. Drakar clearly announced that they had no intentions to attack our tribe. Therefore, there was no reason for us to go to a war with them. What about Pulid? Why did they go to, to war? You see, Pulid are not very good diplomats. They never wanted Drakar in our region, which is generally a comprehensible position. Their error, however, was to openly oppose Drakar and to make some really offensive statements towards them. However, even after these statements, Drakar did not attack them. They offered them forgiveness and peace in exchange for a regular tribute. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pulid went mad and they attacked Drakar, you see. And now they pay a much higher tribute after half of their people have been slaughtered and the other half are treated really badly by Drakar. Hmm. Uh, poor people. They brought it on themselves. Mm, I'm probably going to offend him saying this. Maybe if you would have taken their side in that war, they wouldn't have lost. Look, young man, if one day you become a leader of a tribe and understand what it's like to take a decision to sacrifice the lives of the people you're responsible for, the people you love, then you'll see things very differently. Come to me then, and we'll speak about wars and diplomacy. Uh, sorry if I offended you. I was just analyzing the situation from the tactical point of view. The point is that even if we join the war then, we may still have lost. Drakar are very powerful. We must be thankful for an opportunity to opportunity to live in peace with them well enough talking about this is there anything else you wanted to ask yeah whom else should i ask about my friend ask pulit who lives southwest of here and kiwi who lived to the south they may know something what about Drakar? no don't go to Drakar. they're slavers and raiders if they don't know you they won't even talk to you they'll attack you right away if you resist they'll kill you if you don't they'll sell you as a slave I see. It seems that they're not exactly good guys, are they? Good, bad, it's their problem. My problem is to keep my tribe safe, and it's a big enough problem to keep me busy 24 hours a day. Worrying about other tribes' karma is the last thing I need. Uh, but doesn't Drakar's presence affect you economically? Hmm, it does, a little bit. They occupy some of our pastures, and we used to trade with passing caravans, but since Drakar settled here, caravans sidestepped this area. Have you ever thought about driving Drakar away? Ha! Huh, do you know what you're talking about? Drakar are really tough guys. We have some good warriors here, but not enough to defeat Drakar. And even if some divine miracle makes us win, it'll be a crypt of a war. We'll lose many men, and you know what men are? Men are working power, and men are military power. What if we defeat Drakar and some other tribe comes to take their place? We'll not be a significant enough power to make any agreements anymore. They'll just smash us like a bug, like Drakar did with Pulid. But what if, theoretically, you weren't the only tribe fighting against Drakar? What if others join the war too? 
Others? Who are others? Pulled were literally reduced to dust as a war power. Their participation would only make us look ridiculous. What about Kiwi? Kiwi, you must be joking. You really think those loonies would move a finger to change something outside their spiritual world? Ha! Good luck with that. Is there anybody else who could help? Please don't even think about asking for help somewhere outside this region. There are armies out there that can easily drive Drakar away, but I can guarantee you that they'll just take their place afterwards, and we may start missing Drakar very soon, so let's just leave things as they are. And there's nobody else in this region, right? Nobody, except for some silly legends. Well, what kind of legends? Oh, you don't want to know. People tell some ridiculous stories. Some say there are people living underground who have never seen sunlight in their entire lives. Others say that there's a squad of ghost female riders who seek to take revenge on all men in the world. Some even claim that they saw that Kiwi consider their god traveling through the desert totally alone with no supplies. See what nonsense people believe in? Uh, yeah, pretty unbelievable. Is there anything else I can help you with? Mm. I have an impression that Drakar are really bad people. Good, bad, all right, okay. Um, Can you help me to contact Drakar leaders? Well, if you want to speak with Drakar so badly, I could send one of my men with you, somebody they know, so they wouldn't attack you. However, you must understand that letting one of our men leave his duties at the tribe will affect us economically. Therefore, I must ask you for a compensation. What should it be? We could use some insects. 30 kilograms would be enough. You can get them from Cricket and Silos. He breeds them. I don't know if Cricket has so many insects for sale. Well, he produces them continuously. Buy what he has and come back for more later. Uh, okay, we will do. Um. No thanks, I'll talk to you later. So, we could sell the insects. We could give the insects for, um, getting a person who could have us talk to Drakar. But uh, I'm not going to do the Drakar thing until we go visit the other tribes. So for now, though, I'm going to save because it's that time for an episode. Pretty interesting stuff, though. Uh, definitely digging it so far. We'd have to make like three trips of insects to do this right. Um, let's see. Did we pick up any more meat? We did. We picked up Jerboa meat. We still have 0.5 lizard meat. Um, and the beans have been going a lot. I, I don't understand the uh, this thing too much. Like, relative P. What's relative production? Relative... Oh. So maybe we... See, when I lower this... When I lower the lizard meat, the beans consumption goes down. Now the beans consumption goes up. While the lizard meat consumption goes down. So maybe like... Um, what about the Jerboa meat? Can we get the Jerboa meat up? Okay, so... Now Jerboa meat went down. What if I take that to... Okay, go up here. Upwards of this. Wow, I really do not understand this. Is this a relative percentage? <laughs> I don't get it. Um... I really don't, but let's put rations on 80%. So the gerbo meat would last a second day. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll have to buy food after we drop off these insects. But anyway, I'm sure we'll figure it out as time goes on.
Um, we'll put 90% water consumption too, just to save some. I want to thank you guys for joining me though. Hope you're interested in the game and digging it thus far. Um, feel free to stay tuned and join me next time. Would love to have you for more as we continue this journey. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. Much love, peace, and joy. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Till then, stay cool, and uh, I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.